Hello everyone, my name is Nathan Razor. Thank you so much for joining me on the King of the Cosmos podcast, uh, where we want to give all glory to God. All glory goes to God. As you see in the little title card, it says Soli Deo Gloria now. So, uh, and we mean that. That is the that is the mission of this podcast, is to not only proclaim the Lord Jesus Christ as King and Lord and Sovereign over the world, but also show that God does deserve all of the glory in salvation in all of our life, period. End of story. Um, so it, it has been two weeks, a little bit more than two weeks now, uh, since our last podcast, and we're a little bit behind schedule. Remember, at close to the beginning of this podcast, I wanted this, what we were going to talk about, to run alongside of the sermon series that was going on here, but we we got you know just a little bit behind schedule. But these things happen; they do. Last time I had my two very good friends from seminary on uh, on the program here to talk about justification. But we've also continued to move on in the sermon series here at the church here at Otisville, and we we already went through sanctification. We did two weeks on sanctification, talking about that. And I think it's appropriate before we go on to glorification to go ahead and take some time to talk about sanctification. Now, we talked about glorification. We talked uh, we talked about justification uh, and all the problems with that. How how is one justified? What does it mean to be justified? And sometimes, depending on the church, the church's problem with justification. Um, and those problems don't stop as soon as we get to sanctification. By the way, they don't. Unfortunately, they they just multiply. Now, before we get into actually talking about sanctification, I want to be able to contrast sanctification from justification. John Calvin, he said that the Lord does not justify who he does not sanctify. They happen. Whereas justification like the atonement, is, is a once-for-all declaration. Sanctification begins when the person is put into Christ, but it continues on throughout the rest of their life. And where, whereas the, the legalist hates justification, they don't want to talk about it, the, the antinomian doesn't want to hear anything about sanctification. It's almost like two sides of the same coin. They don't they don't want to talk about it. Uh, but we are encouraged to preach the whole counsel of God, the whole counsel as revealed in the Word of God. And where justification goes against the legalist's idea of, I build up my own righteousness. How dare you say that I have the imputed righteousness of Christ? Sanctification will now go against the antinomian, the carnal Christian, the person that believe, that believes all you have to do is just believe, and I don't have to obey Jesus, I don't have to listen and submit to his commands, or anything like that, that would be wrong as well. Uh, so that's what we're going to talk about today. But there there is a caveat, because in sanctification there are two parts, even though we're going to try to cover them in the 30 minutes that we have allotted to us today, Sanctification has two parts. It begins at a certain moment. When we are put into Christ, it begins. But who does it? Who is the one that sets us apart? Who is the one that sanctifies us? First of all, let's, let's define sanctification. I already said it. It's to be set apart or to be made holy. And every single time you read about it in the New Testament, who is the initiating force behind our sanctification? Who starts that process? Is it us? No. No, it, it is not us. We can, we can look at texts like 2 Thessalonians, uh, where Paul says in chapter 2, verse 13, how we are sanctified by the Spirit. You can go to Romans 15, 16, where again, Paul will say, we're sanctified by the Spirit. And again, in, in, in 1 Peter, First Peter, right at the beginning of the letter, Peter says that we are sanctified by the Spirit. 
we have to understand kind of what's going on here. To be made holy, to be sanctified, to be set apart, to be made holy, this is something that the Christian has to work towards. We are to become more and more holy every single day, to be more and more like Jesus Christ. But we do not begin and we do not start that process of sanctification. We do not do holy things and we do not set ourselves apart from the world because we are the ones doing it. Just like we do righteous deeds even though we don't declare ourselves righteous. Just like justification. We do righteous things because we have been justified. We, we, be, we are holy. We, we set ourselves apart. We are continued, continuing to be like Jesus because we have been sanctified and not by ourselves. It's by the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is what sanctifies us, what sets us apart. God has always desired this. Sorry, coffee break. God has always desired this for His people. He has always wanted His people to be set apart from the rest of the world. Always. And it was like that not only in, in Exodus, and it was, it was like that in the first century. And it's like that today. God wants us to be different than the world. We should look different than the world. Even, you know, even the, even the Pharisees, this is, this is kind of where legalism can find its way into it, by the way. Even the Pharisees, they were, they were made around 135 AD, but they were called the set apart ones because their desire, they, they didn't want the commands of God to be transgressed. They didn't want people sinning against God. So instead of just giving the commands of God, they put up hedge laws around the commands of God. And a lot of people do that in the church today as well, which is, which is again, not a good thing. But we're not talking about legalism today. I just, wanted to make the, I just wanted to make the comparison. Sanctification has always been the will of God. In fact, it, it says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3, For this is the will of God, your sanctification. He wants us to be set apart, to look different from the world, to be holy and everything like that. But we have to understand, whereas atonement and justification, that is done completely by God, not by us, which is why justification is by faith, not by works. It's done completely by God. Sanctification is done by God and by us. And it's, it's kind of a, a heady topic to, to consider because the Spirit of God he is the one that initiates sanctification and, and helps us carry it out all the way through our life. This is kind of where we get into the weeds a little bit with a lot of my brothers and sisters in Christ, whom I love very much and respect very much. Um, they don't want to consider the Spirit's role in sanctification. Uh, and I get it. I get it. We're trying to avoid things like Pentecostalism or charismatic teachings where the Holy Spirit makes you speak in tongues and, you know, spin around on the floor and run around the auditorium and everything like that. I get it. We want to avoid that error. Of course, naturally. But you don't, you don't, again, the concept of the pendulum swing definitely comes in here. You don't swing all the way so far away from that teaching that you go past the center point where the Bible is and go off into this other, this other pendulum swing, this other idea, where you've completely cut, up, cut out the Spirit altogether. And a lot, of, a lot of my brothers and sisters in Christ have done that. I think that's wrong. Uh, we have to understand that the sanctification is God's work and our work. Sure, we make the choice to get things out of our life because our hearts have been changed. We want to follow Jesus Christ. But God helps us in this. There, there are so many texts in the New Testament, Ephesians. Um, that's the one that I specifically 
cited during the sermon here. You can go ahead and watch that if you wanted to hear that. But also, you know, there's that whole concept of the fruit of the Spirit as well. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, all that, all of that. But whose fruit is it again? Who, who does that belong to? It belongs to the Spirit. It's just like you have a tree that produces apples. Now, that apple, whose fruit is that? It's, it's the tree's fruit. It's the one that produced it. And it's the same thing with the Spirit. The Spirit of God, He works in us, and He produces love, joy, peace, patience, kind, all that stuff within the heart and the mind of the Christian. That does not take away your will. That does not take away your choice. We want to auto- automatically swing all the way over there, but that's historically that is not how, how Christians have viewed it. It's just not. It's, it's not how they viewed it at all. We are set apart by the Spirit of God to do the work of God, in which God helps. God helps us to become more and more like His Son, Jesus Christ, all of the time. All the time. He strengthens us, quite literally, strengthens us. Don't really know how it happens, but just because we don't, we don't know how something happens doesn't mean that it does not happen. I mentioned this in the first, uh, the first episode of this podcast about God's eternality or God's sovereignty. We don't know how far-reaching and how extensive that it, that it goes. I mean, we, we know that God is eternal. I can't comprehend with my tiny human created brain how that even works. I just know that it does. And it's the same thing with the working of the Spirit in our lives. I get it. I get it. We want to avoid error. Sure. Once again, we do not cut out the Bible in doing so. When you're put into Christ, when you're baptized into Christ, Acts chapter 2, verse 38, Peter says, Repent, be baptized, every one of you. Why? For the forgiveness of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the gift there is talking about the Holy Spirit. The promise is talking about resurrection, but we'll get into that later. We'll talk about that some other time. But I wanted to talk about sanctification it's because it's such an important topic in the Christian's life. Um, I was reading in a commentary when I was going over the series that we, whereas justification gives us imputed righteousness, remember that? Well, the commentary said we need not only imputed righteousness, but we need righteousness realized as well. And that's true. Whatever, whatever happens to the Christian will, will come out. It will. So, thus far, let me, let me pull back. I know I just threw like a whole bunch of stuff your way and expected you to catch it with your two arms. Let's pull back just a little bit. Sanctification is to become more and more like Jesus Christ every single day. You start off here at this point, and your end goal is to get here. This whole area is sanctification that's in between my two hands. And different Christians are at different points in sanctification. But the goal is Jesus Christ. The beginning point is when we are atoned for, when we are justified, when we are placed into Christ. That's the beginning. The end right here is becoming like Jesus. Now, we don't, we, this is important to say, we do not reach the point of becoming like Jesus in this lifetime. To, to teach that we do, to teach that we could ever reach a point where we could become sinless and perfectly righteous, um, is to teach a Wesleyan doctrine um, of perfectionism. And I, I, know, I know several people on YouTube they preach that. They preach perfectionism. And it's an error. 
it is just an error. John says right in the first chapter, if we say we have no sin, we lie. The Christian will never become like Jesus Christ in this lifetime. The point, the point of this lifetime is to continue to work towards that goal of becoming like him. The only time when we meet, when we meet the, the position of being like Jesus Christ is after we have died and when we have been resurrected to receive our glorified bodies. That is when that will happen. Like it says in 1 John chapter 3, when we see him, we will be like him because we shall see him as he is. But we're not there yet. We'll talk about glorification later. Right now, we're just talking about sanctification. Um, there is there's a concept called the carnal Christian um, where you don't, all you have to do is claim Jesus as Savior but not as Lord, and that's good enough to save you. That's not, that's, not how that, that's not how that works. That is never how it's worked. Jesus Christ has never said that that would even work. He, he never said that. And to suggest that is, is quite literally to guide people into hell. It, it really is. And it's a sad, it's a sad thing because plenty of people believe it. Plenty of people believe that all I have to do is just claim Jesus as Savior and not as Lord, and I'll be okay. And those that claim Jesus as Lord are accused of lordship salvation, where we're trying to work off our salvation. We're trying to work for our salvation. When if you, if you heard me in the, in the past few videos, you know that that's not the case. <laughs> because the doctrine of justification, something that I believe is lacking in the church, is completely against that view of any kind of working off your salvation, any kind of building of your own righteousness, because you can't. We now do righteous deeds in our sanctification because we have been made righteous in our justification. We now, we now work towards holiness because we have been made holy by the Holy Spirit. And this is, this is God's will for us. 1 Thessalonians 4, for this is the will of God. This is God's desire for you. This is what He wants from you. Be sanctified. He desires our sanctification. And then Paul goes on to explain, you know, stuff that that's like. You know, abstain from sexual immorality. Uh, control your own body. That's easy self-control. Not easy, but it's self-control. But not easy self-control. It's self-control. Uh, not the same, you know, kind of lust that we had before we were in Christ. Y you want to look back at your life before you were a Christian. And look at yourself now as a follower of Jesus Christ, and you should be able to tell a clear difference. A clear difference. And if you can't, I would, I would seriously consider how closely am I following Jesus. Even, even if you've been a Christian for a while now, seasoned Christians, you should be able to look back 10 years and see some difference than you are now as a Christian. Some difference. There ought to be some difference. Some, some working closer and closer to the image of Jesus Christ. And once again, if not, I would, I would look at my priorities. I would look at, do I see Jesus just as a Savior? Or do I see, see Him as my Savior and my Lord? That He gets to tell me what to do. I, I submit to Him. I listen to his commands. I read, I read the words to see, to see what he says. If not, there's, there's a problem. But sanctification, once again, it's a two-part thing. It's God's part and our part. 
and how the Spirit works in us to help us get out more of our sin and strengthen us and produce the fruits of the Spirit and stuff like that. How that works, we don't know. We don't know how it works. But just because we don't know how something works in the Scriptures doesn't mean that we throw them out. That's never been, that has never been a balanced position. And you can see it all the time. You can see it all the time in how people interpret the Bible. Because they don't understand something, well, then that teaching needs to be thrown out. And that's not right. That's just not right. And that's not honest. It's not honest with the text. Hmm. And <clears throat> sorry if I'm not as energetic as usual. Um, I just got back from working on one of the, a roof here with some of the guys. And they were putting me to work. <sighs> but it was okay. Anyways. We, we have to realize our spiritual, our physical state as creatures, that we are fallen. We, we have fallen. Genesis 3 still happened. Death actually did enter into the world. And not just spiritual death, physical death. People die now because of sin. People die, things get old and rot away, decay happens, there's diseases now, mutation, genetic mutations that would not have happened in the garden, in the Edenic paradise that was where our, our God created us to be with Him. We are fallen creatures, which, by the way, is why we need to become a new creation. Paul calls us a new creation. And we continue to be that new creation all throughout our life. That's sanctification, becoming more and more like Jesus Christ. We want to become more and more like that new creation all the time. And it, it's so, I, I preach this. It's such a frustrating thing. It is a frustrating thing, and we can be honest. It is a frustrating thing to kind of go through this. And you know what? The Apostle Paul felt your frustration, by the way. But the frustrating thing, before I get to what he said, the frustrating thing is, whereas before, the will of your flesh and the will of your soul, they were going in one direction, both of them, just following after your own desires, whatever you wanted to do. But now... We became the internal new creation before we become the actual new creation when we receive our glorified bodies. We have become new creations internally. So whereas before our flesh and our spirit were going in one way, now our spirit is going against the flesh. We are in a war every single day with our flesh. Every single day. This is, this is one of the fights in sanctification. The Apostle Paul expressed this in Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. You can, you can hear his frustration. You can hear it. Listen, Romans 7, verse, eh, verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, sold under my sin. For I do not understand my own actions. For I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law that it is good. So now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that whenever I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight, listen, I, I delight in the law of God in my inner being, but I see in my members another law, waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. We are currently in a fallen state. Our very natures have been corrupted, have been fallen. They have. 
This is the whole point of us becoming a new creation. Otherwise, why not remain as the old creation if the old creation was good enough? But we don't do that. We are, we are told to become a new creation. A new creation that God is working towards. And so we want, we want to serve God and love Him and serve Jesus Christ. But our flesh, our fallen nature, and I did say fallen nature, it wars against us. Now, as soon as I said fallen nature, I already know it. I already know it. Somebody thought original sin or total depravity. Nope. Again, there's a pendulum swing. There's a pendulum swing. And the way that the biblical text presents it is, once again, a fallen nature. We die now. We get disease. There are thorns in the creation. We are tied to the creation in that... We have fallen, it has fallen. That's why Romans 8, once again, we're tied to the creation. We're waiting for that day, the redemption of our bodies, when the creation will no longer groan in pains and stuff like that. We'll get into that later. We'll talk about glorification and everything. But this is the point. We, we now have a new internal nature, and our internal natures want to follow Jesus Christ. I want to love God more than I love myself, more than I love my sin. But man, do I make it hard on myself. I really do. You know, I used to say, you know, Christianity is easy. It's just me that gets in the way. And that's so true. I want to follow Jesus Christ. But my own flesh, the way that Paul says it here, I don't have the ability to carry it out. I don't. None of us do. For I know that nothing good dwells in my members. That's what Paul said. Let's be honest with the text here. This is where God comes in. I know you're sitting there wondering, wait, what does this have to do with sanctification? This is where God comes in. This is why the Spirit is the one that has to set us apart, not us. We do holy things, and we do set ourselves apart in that we stop, we actively stop trying to be not only like our former selves, but the rest of the world. But the Spirit of God helps us in this. He helps us do this. Because our, our, our natures are against it. We don't have the ability to do it. This is why he helps. This is why, as Ephesians says, he strengthens us in our inner being. Sanctification is an incredibly important topic. Incredibly important for the Christian. Like I said, legalists hate justification. Antinomians, those who don't want to live for Jesus, those who don't want to follow the commands of God, they hate sanctification. But it needs to be taught nonetheless. Because when we get back down to it, when this is where we started and this is where we're going to end. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3. For this is the will of God, your sanctification. This is the desire of God. This is what He wants from you. Be sanctified. Be different. Look like my son. The Father wants us to look like his son, Jesus Christ. That's the goal of the Christian. So, I think we're going to cut it off there. Next time, next time I'm planning on having um, a good friend of mine, a mentor of mine, Jesse Nelson, on, on the program here so that we can... We can have another kind of preacher talk episode, but we're talking about justification. No, no, no. We're not talking about... We just did that. We're talking about sanctification uh, next time when he comes on the program, um, which will be next week, most likely. I'm still talking to him on that, so we'll see what happens. But expect the next episode to be a, a preacher talk episode, and uh, we will... We'll see you next time. Uh, once again, 
I say it every video, please share. Please share the video because it can get the content out there. It can bless people. It can, it can encourage them to follow closer and closer to the Lord. It can also give them great hope and encouragement. Um, but like I said, share the, share the video, share the podcast. And I, I pray that you have a good day. I pray that the Lord blesses you in your walk with Jesus. And we will see you next time, okay? Take care.